have an on. So you wake up. And oh, by the way, before I start, can I not change? Can we pretend it's Yom Kippur? And I, I don't want to change it to now and all that. It's, well, this is the sermon I gave as written for Colin and Dre when I had 700 Jews and another 500 on live stream. My camera was working. And then, so 1,200 Jews heard this, and I'm still held accountable for what I said. So here we go. Good Yanta! Yanta. I can't hear you. Good Yanta! Good Yanta! Of all the days which wake up Yamim Hanorai, the days of all, this Kol Nidre night is perhaps the most awesome. Or, if you consider that how we do in the next 25 hours will determine if we are inscribed in the book of life, this night is also the most fearsome. And that's the thing about Yira, the root of the word Norai. It can mean both fear or awe. Fear may be the belief that someone or something is dangerous and likely to cause pain or death. Awe is reverence or respect mixed with perhaps fear and wonder. The way we get from fear to awe is through engagement. Let me say that again. I want you to really grab that. The way we get from fear to awe is through engagement. Tonight, I want to suggest that perhaps the most fearsome thing we need to work on is apologizing. And I am suggesting it should not mean asking for forgiveness. That's like asking for a gift. The person we wronged can choose to forgive us or not. That's their choice. But we can choose if we are going to say we are sorry and do it in a way that is meaningful and transformative. To help us understand why it is so fearsome to apologize, why it can lead to awe, and how do we engage in delivering truly excellent apologies, I am turned to two experts, Marjorie Ingall and Susan McCarthy, managers of the Sorry Watch website. They are also authors of the new book, so perfectly tied up for Yom Kippur, Sorry, 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 The Case for Good Apologies. Ingle and McCarthy opened their guidebook to apology by observing, Apologies are evidence of a society that cares about itself, a society that honors other people's experiences, thoughts, and feelings as precious. In tiny ways and larger ways, apologies move us towards justice. Sounds lofty, but truly, apologies can civilize us. In our day-to-day -day dealing, that in the wider social sphere, they make things better. It's, it's human nature to sometimes disappoint or betray others, but the saying you're sorry and doing it well has the near miraculous super heroic power to heal. Have you ever received an absolutely horrible apology? Did it feel like it was disguised as an apology, but it just didn't ring true or helpful? We've all been the recipient of terrible apologies. Apologies like, sorry if you took my suggestion in the wrong way, or sorry I didn't realize you were so sensitive, or sorry, but you always fill in the dots. Awful. Why do people who use the word sorry, end up messing it up so bad. Fear. People like you and me are coping with fear. And I would like to bring some of these fears to light so we can address them. So many fears, where to begin? <clears throat> I have learned that some people fear apologies as a sign of weakness, and they see the refusal to apologize as being muscular and tough. Of course, it's just the opposite. Apologizing means letting your best self crash through the wall of your own self-defensiveness. The fear of looking weak runs deep in us social animals. During cave times, looking weak can be dangerous, and the wild animals that look weak are the targets of predators. 
modern human predators, we also capitalize on another's apology. We see this in politics all the time, but at this time of reflection, let me suggest, giving a sincere apology takes courage. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Morrow is the owner of Centerville Place Cafe. She's also a one-time Pennsylvania 6th Congressional District candidate, representing all of Chester and parts of Fox counties. She knows about courage. If you visit her cafe, she will not only greet you with a great lunch, but she might give you her book, The Civil Racist Project, The Pursuit for Common Ground. She autographed one copy, and I told her I would find its way into my young keyboard sermon. Courage, she writes, has often been understood as bravery and having the strength to do something extraordinary. Courage is Latin for of the heart, or coming forth with your whole heart. There's nothing braver or stronger than revealing your full heart. Moral observes that courage is something every American can expect as their birthright. She writes, we are the heirs to the grace of courage. Why are we not more courageous when it comes to apologizing? Moro's answer, failure is such a tricky thing. We must learn the most from when we try and fail, but often this is such a lonely road. After Moro lost her bid to Congress, she observed, it has been courage that has helped me get back to my feet. In their story watch, uh, authors Engel and McCarthy <clears throat> reference Senator Fritz Hollings of South Carolina's 1983 apology after calling Iowa supporters of his opponent, Alan Cranston, wetbacks from California. <laughs> Hollings responded to the public outcry with odd and no way intended those remarks to be a comment on Hispanics or Mexican Americans. I apologize for my choice of words if they offended anyone. Engel and McCarthy observed, pro tip, you, may def you have definitely offended people if you have to apologize. Holly, the Iowa campaign manager, Ken Purcell did not help matters when he explained that Holly did not mean it in a racial sense. It was meant to the sense of uh, people crossing the state border to do something in another state. I hope people will not take it as a racial insult. It was not meant as such. Ingo and McCarthy add, stop talking, Ken. <laughs> Politicians, Fritz Holley and his campaign manager, were serious in the ridiculous disclaimers. Not so the British troop Monty Python. In their apology, a disclaimer regarding politicians. We would like to apologize for the way in which politicians are represented in this program. It was never our intention to imply that politicians are weak need political time service who are concerned more with their personal vendettas and private power struggles than the problems of government, nor to suggest at any point that they sacrifice their credibility by denying free debate on vital matters in the mistaken impression that party unity comes before the well-being of the people they supposedly represent, nor to imply at any stage that they are squabbling little toadies without an ounce of concern for the vital social problems of today. We are sorry if this impression has come across. A bad apology, like the ones offered by Senator Hollings or Monty Python, misses the point sometimes deliberately. The Hebrew word for sin, het, actually is an archery term meaning missing the mark. It is the focus of the next 25 hours together. It takes courage to attempt an apology knowing it may not work, that our efforts may be ridiculed and miss the mark. What other fears get in the way of our apologizing? The biggest, the most damaging fear is social media because it impacts potentially millions of readers. When Maimonides, Ramba, in his Laws of Repentance, advised to go to the person you've wronged and apologize, he never dreamt there potentially would be so many other people watching. Sometimes when a person gets attacked on social media and then apologizes for the offense, other social media users refuse to accept the apology. 
even if that apology is good and heartfelt. Some folks get addicted to the validation they get from flame throwing. And if you check the social media platforms, you will observe that there are way fewer vulture applause for accepting an apology. Because the latter is boring. Good news does not sound. If it bleeds, it reads. And if the apology isn't good, that leads to...